G'day guys, let's give you a short snippet about um, the, the, the cause of taxing in or unrealized gains, okay? So basically, previously I did a video about the 3 million super and how they want to tax that. Now they've introduced a little thing under the floorboards, they want to tax unrealized gains on super. And now everyone's coming out of wood, woodworks to tax unrealized gains in general on property and shares and stuff like that. Well, actually mainly property, but they'll creep into shares, okay? And this is a reason why I don't like I guess here right now, this is a not a good idea for you guys in general. If you guys are advocating and stuff like that, you gotta realize now that this is a very very bad idea. Okay, so basically this professor, I believe, is uh, Anthony Asher as well. We'll get his article up here. We we'll get a little snippet, um, obviously because of copyright reasons. But he's um wrote this sentence. Case okay? basically talks about like the noisy opposition and stuff like that, and um, he's basically put this argument here as well. Now he's put the argument saying that the arguments, um. The arguments for higher taxes, repair the budget, reduce inflation are strong and widely accepted. But the way election promises not impose or increase existing taxes. Taxing unrealized capital gains would do neither. It would only bring forward what people would have paid, would have uh, paid anyway when they sell. They're most commonly from those who have made huge profits with no personal effort. High interest rates, however, will come from most recent borrowers who have made much smaller capital gains. Now, I have never heard a... I've never heard, I guess so right now, a sillier argument than that to tax unrealized capital gains, okay? So realistically, what a government's going to do when they talk about taxing unrealized capital gains is they're going to implement a system where basically the unrealized gains, they'll take a bit of tax out of every time. But the moment you make a loss, they'll say you can only realize that loss the moment you sell an asset. They will never, ever introduce a system where they have to refund money as much as they have to pay it. Because it's a hard system to administrate in the first place, okay? You would have to get a computer system, then you have to pay lots of money. And I'm going to say at one point, it might be more, it might cost more than to manage than actually what you get out of the taxes. So they're going to have this unfair system where they'll tax you on all your gains, but you can only offset the losses when you sold the asset, okay? Maybe something like that. Basically, you get a refund on all the gains you paid, but you didn't receive kind of thing. Now, um, the worst part is, is the statement that says that they will always they will have a profit anyway and they make no effort now with unrealized ca capital gains let's just talk about that for a moment before i go into really hard on the no effort part now with the capital gains part is that you don't know your capital gains position until you sell your asset and you have no idea when you're going to sell your asset okay maybe you sell your property 10 years later 20 years 30 years um, maybe you sell into a loss, you know, do you get that money back later? Probably, you know, yeah. But you can see what I'm talking about here is that you don't know when you're going to sell your property or when you're going to sell your shares. So by assuming that you make a profit, after that thing can be ridiculous. You may make a loss. The, the, the share in particular may collapse, you know, because of other shares and stuff like that. And it's quite ridiculous paying income tax on unrealized gains when you actually haven't realized it yet. And a lot of people who want to do that is that they just want more tax in a quicker prospect uh, without waiting. And that's that's what the modern economy has is that taxes need to catch up to tax people as they go along instead of, you know, taxing when they actually sell the asset. Now, this is going to definitely scare people off investing, okay, if this sort of thing is done because if they win, they have to pay tax. If they lose, it's like, ah, bad luck, it's your fault kind of thing. You know, and People don't like that, okay? The middle class people, okay? I'm not talking about big banks, okay? Big banks are the fucking opposite, okay? They avoid tax, but the moment they lose money, they want everyone else, the tax government, to pay for it, okay? Everyone, you know, you get what I mean, okay? I'm talking about the, the Joe Blows, okay? I'm not talking about the big banks, okay? The big banks, yes, I agree with you. They do this sort of shit all the time, okay, to the governments, okay? But I can say right now, it's absolutely ridiculous to have the average punter paying unrealized capital gains tax um, as a tax, and then... Basically, you're bailing out the big banks every time. And also, you're punishing the average punter for investing their money for good management and their own personal effort, which is where I'm going to get to now. You know, where they get that unrealized capital gain. You're punishing them for that, and you're giving them no represents if they lose money, okay? Like, you can be like, ah, oh, you got to sell your assets or event. Like, you know, before you can get the refund back. Because we know it's going to happen. That's exactly what's going to happen. That's how the government's going to set it up is that you pay on your capital gains, but if you want to get a refund for your capital losses, you have to sell the asset. Let's continue. Now, no personal effort. That is ridiculous. That is an absolute ridiculous statement, okay? 
Um, if you ever invest in property, you have a plan, you have to maintain the property, you have to do your inspections. Do you think property owners just sit there and do nothing? Do you, you have a property manager or a blue collar worker to check it's working? Like things break, you know, you got to make sure your house is somewhat respectable, otherwise people aren't going to rent in it. You know, tenants are very serious as well when they you know, want to get into property to rent. They don't rent, you know, a shack. You can't just build like a, a, bo a wooden box and, you know, someone's going to pay $500 to stay in a wooden box or something like that. You know, you have to actually make it attractive. Otherwise, people aren't going to rent it. I uh, want to rent that sort of thing, okay? People aren't that desperate where they will take a dilapidated house for, you know, one one k a week, okay? There's going to be some personal effort involved. Now, from a share perspective, obviously, you know, researching your shares to whether the company is going to be um, profitable in the long run, you know, with fundamental technical analysis, that's a personal effort in itself. And I think it's a ridiculous term to devalue anyone who's profitable saying they just got lucky. Okay, absolutely devaluation and minimization of a person's personal effort. And that's another thing about why I'm against unrealized capital gains as well. It really devalues a person's personal effort and really desensitizes someone to put the effort in if they're just going to be taxed heavily in the end. Okay, and more heavier and heavier and heavier. And people encourage that sort of culture where, you know, they will tax a person's performance at the start, but when they lose money, they're not there for them. It's just like, oh, it's your fault. It's it's the opposite of the bank's perspective where you get to keep all the gains, but the losses, everyone else has to take the, uh, take the fall for it. It's instead that you take the fall for the losses, but we want your gains. You know, it's the opposite kind of scenario here. And that's why I don't like that sort of system. It's, it's, in, it's, you know, it's not equitable. It's not fair. It's very, very unfair. It will become very, very unfair. The, you know, the government will always want it in their favor because they can take on the smaller guys, but they will never, never take on the big banks because they're receiving a lot of money from them. So that's the problem there with this unrealized capital gain stuff. It attacks the middle and the lower class, but it will never attack the wealthy. That's pretty much it. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy it, and hope you guys have a great day.